Hello people, Alex from Singlet here and in this video I'm going to show you how to make a continuous code quality and security analysis pipeline using CodeQL. CodeQL is the analysis engine used by developers to automate security checks and by security researchers to perform variant analysis. In CodeQL, code is treated like data. Security vulnerabilities, bugs and other errors are modeled as queries that can be executed against databases extracted from code. So what does all of that mean? Well, more simply put for the purposes of this tutorial, a project's source code is given to the CodeQL analysis tool and based on a number of queries, CodeQL gives feedback on the security and quality of that source code. To integrate the CodeQL analysis tool in GitHub Actions, we will be using the CodeQL action suite created by GitHub. Let's first take a brief look at the sample pipeline that the good people behind the CodeQL Actions have provided us. First, a name is given to the pipeline. It is interesting to note here that the name key is not mandatory, and if omitted, GitHub sets it to the pipeline file path relative to the root of the repository. Then, a few trigger events are declared, so this pipeline would execute on every push commit, every pull request, and on a cron schedule of every Sunday at 1.30 a.m. UTC. The pipeline consists of a single job named CodeQL build and it runs on Ubuntu latest. In the first step, we check out the repository using the GitHub checkout action. Then, with the CodeQL init action, we initialize the CodeQL analysis tool. Then, if our project is written in a compiled language like C Sharp or Java, we could use the CodeQL autobuild action to automatically detect and build the source code. That, in the next step, would be analyzed by the CodeQL analyze action. In case the project is written in an interpreted language like JavaScript or Python, the autobuild step is unnecessary and should be removed because it would break the pipeline since it won't find any source code to build. This simple example pipeline would work for many projects, especially single language and less complex ones, but it probably won't work for more complex projects that involve bigger code bases and numerous languages. So with that in mind, let's move on to our example pipeline. For it, we will be using Microsoft's awesome sample application Rock Paper Scissors Lizard Spock because it consists of several compiled and interpreted languages which would allow us to show a bit more elaborate implementation of the CodeQL action suit. So, on the first line, we name the pipeline. That rhymed. Anyway. Then we declare several trigger events. In this case, the pipeline should execute on push commits and pull requests only when a change in the source folder is made. We also add cron schedule of every day at 8 a.m. UTC and the option to execute the pipeline manually with the workflow dispatch event. A brief side note, currently the manual execution is discovered by going to the actions tab and choosing the pipeline from the workflows list. If the pipeline has the workflow dispatch trigger event and the pipeline has been executed successfully at least once, you would be able to see this bar and by clicking on the run workflow dropdown you would be able to choose a branch to run the pipeline on and then execute the pipeline manually by clicking on the run workflow button. Now back to the code of the CodeQL analysis pipeline. The pipeline consists of a single job named analyze that runs on Ubuntu latest. We've declared a strategy matrix with an array of languages. These are four of the five languages that are used in this project. The fifth is PHP, but as of the time of this recording, CodeQL does not support PHP. A strategy matrix is used in GitHub Actions to allow parallel execution of several configurations of the pipeline. A bit later, we'll see what is the particular purpose of the strategy matrix in this case. The first step in the pipeline does the checkout of the repository. Next, the CodeQL analysis tool is initialized and here are the first couple of differences between the sample pipeline and our pipeline. We have given the following two inputs to the init action, languages and queries. 
Languages tells CodeQL to look for a specific language or a set of languages. By giving the languages input the value of matrix.language, in addition to the pipeline being executed in parallel for each of the four languages, we tell CodeQL to ignore the code from any other language present and focus only on the specified one. Queries tells CodeQL to use more queries in addition to the default set. CodeQL's default set is a specific number of high severity and precision security queries. There are two more sets of queries. Security Extended, which contains queries of lower severity and precision, and Security and Quality, which we've used here that contains queries from Security Extended plus Maintainability and Reliability queries. In addition to the out-of-the-box queries, the CodeQL Analysis tool accepts user-defined sets. For more information on that, please check out the documentation linked in the description below. The next two steps build the C-Sharp and Java code and each one executes only when the pipeline is run for the language per the strategy matrix. That is accomplished by checking in a conditional statement what is the value of the language property. The C-Sharp code is built using the CodeQL AutoBuild action and the Java portion is built by using a custom build script. We would suggest always trying the CodeQL AutoBuild action first before writing your own build commands because it does usually do the job very efficiently. However, sometimes, as with the Java code in this project, it can't figure out a way to build the code, so you need to add your custom build commands. The build steps aside, there are two more languages in the strategy matrix that the pipeline runs for, JavaScript and Python. If you remember from the first portion of the video, since these two are interpreted languages, they don't require building for CodeQL to analyze their code. The last step in the pipeline performs the CodeQL analysis. Once the pipeline is committed to the project's default branch, it won't start automatically, because if you remember it was restricted to start only when a change in the source folder is made. To simulate that, I created an empty text file and committed it to the source folder. Here we see that the pipeline has already completed successfully. After the code scanning pipeline has completed successfully on the default branch, here at Security Code Scanning are listed all of the issues the code analysis has gathered. And for each one, there is a detailed explanation and a remediation strategy. That concludes the tutorial. Although there are a lot more intricate and interesting details to code scanning on GitHub, we sincerely believe this is a great starting point on your journey to continuously ever more secure code. To learn more about the CodeKL Action Suite, please check out the README at the project's repo page. To learn more about code scanning in general on GitHub, please check out GitHub's code security documentation. Both links are in the description below. If you have any questions about implementing code scanning with CodeKL in your project, please don't hesitate to ask us in the comment section. We're happy to help. If you need assistance with DevOps implementation in your open source project, check out the description of this video where you will find links to the Pipeline Foundation project board and onboarding application submission. We are at your disposal. Thanks for watching. If you have any thoughts about this video, please let us know in the comments and feel free to like, subscribe and strike the bell if you'd like to hear more from us. Until next time, stay safe and aspire to DevOps.